Hey everyone, Jared here. Welcome to my guide on how to complete the Champions Quest in Warzone 3 Urza Extent. The goal of this video is to increase the quality of your nuke attempts, and I've designed this guide to kind of be timeless and relevant to all seasons of Warzone. We're going to talk about the best ways and strategies to play each element. Many guides out there gloss over important things, and they don't offer a plethora of strategies to kind of use in your toolkit. Uh, their guides assume 100% success rate with a stack team, and don't take into account the mistakes that happen so much on nuke runs. In my opinion, their guides cover a very general level of nuking, and most nuke runs, nothing ever goes to plan. You have to develop backup plans or even contingencies. I've detonated around 32 nukes up until the release of this video. I've nuked with average and bad players, and I've also nuked with great players. A lot of this knowledge was collectively pulled together from myself and friends. Another thing to know is it has to be understood for anyone attempting a nuke. Nukes are hard and sometimes impossible. It is you against the whole lobby. You will fail nukes, you will get griefed by players, you'll get horrible luck when it comes to the champion's quest. Sometimes an element's gonna spawn in the hottest area in the circle. It's just the way it is. But yeah, anyways, I sincerely hope this guide can help you drop your first nuke, if not more. Um, I'm also always down to help with nuke contracts themselves. I don't help with streaks, but if you DM me on Discord, there's a good chance I'm always ready to kind of help with a nuke contract. The first thing that I do for any nuke run is to assess the lobby skill. You can scout the skill of the lobby by inspecting the report player list. You can do this in the menus or in game, or you could have intentionally have your teammates get killed and try to see what their calling cards are by the players that kill you. Um, but essentially what you're looking for are nuke emblems, ranked emblems, warzone series, top 215 calling cards are a given, but pretty much you just want to see if there are any threatening or good teams in your lobby. Find a lobby with no good team and then you'll be good to go. You're looking for low level accounts, bronze ranks and ranked, and that's it. Just try to look out for any threatening teams. If there's no threatening teams, then you may have a good chance to nuke in the lobby. One thing to know, if you're seeing players that are all level one on the report list with bronze ranks, you need to reset your game to start seeing those players again. It's a visual bug, happens all the time during frequent long gaming sessions. All right, jobs. Um, I typically have one to two people grab helicopters to grab the Geiger counter and they can zip on over to the beryllium element really fast. And then I have one to two people grab LTBs and have them hit some hidden caches. I have to emphasize how great hidden caches are. Each cache can give you between three to $7,000 and you'll even get portable buys, a loadout marker, multiple selfs, layers, pretty much the best loot in the game. Uh, I typically just use these caches to loot, period. I don't even bother looting regular buildings. It's just a waste of time. If you also chain these routes up to like four or even six of them, you can get like 30 to 25 grand off of this run. And you can get all of these within like a minute and a half, which is insane. I highly recommend that you learn where all of these stashes are and use them in your new runs. I believe there's a website called uh, Tactical map for Warzone uh, Urzikstan, and you can pretty much just see all of these routes. Go ahead and land and plunder and just try to find all of these stashes and practice them because they're definitely going to get you really far in your nuke runs. When it comes to choosing contracts, uh, generally speaking, we tend to choose contracts that are in zone and we want those contracts that are not in hot areas of the map. You also don't have to grab it instantly. You can kind of use this time to make sure everyone has a good start, no one dies, everyone successfully grabs their vehicles. My team however we're pretty confident in our nuke runs so we just grab it instantly so we can get to work with uh, the elements another thing to know is these contracts typically have like no rhyme or reason to where your elements will spawn we've picked up contracts that are on one side of the map and had have had geiger counter shoot across the other side of the map and it's really just RNG at this point. For all sakes and purposes, you know, just pick up one that's very easy to grab so you can get to work. But um, you have until about the one minute and 45 seconds mark of the circle, first circle closing, but um, it also varies. So it might be a little bit earlier. It might be a little bit later. So if you've been looting a lot of hidden caches, you would have enough money to either buy a Lodi, an advanced UAV, and don't forget when you first pick up BE element, the chest gives out either 15 or 20 grand, which is enough for a Lodi or an advanced UAV. So you can really use a lot of this money towards info, and that's what I typically do. We just pop an advanced UAV, send BE in the most clearest part of the map where there are no players. This is by far the best strategy that I've used for BE. When BE is in your possession, you avoid having to fight for it later, which is potential time that you're wasting. And if you're unsuccessful, you have to regain during a nuke run. You may have to buy teammates back. So it's very costly in terms of the nuke run that you have to potentially reclaim BE and you're dying and everything. But I've also seen people have some success 
uh, by dropping it in a part of the map that is essentially open. You don't want to drop it like in a city where there's plenty of buildings to camp and they can watch it. You just want to drop it in a very open area. I usually throw it in these hills right here um, in between Popov and uh, Cargo. And you can also throw it in that field uh, where military base is. I've used this strategy a lot and what I've learned is that no matter where you put it, people will camp your element. Um, I've seen everything uh, and people's creativity to grief your nuke, it, it really doesn't end. So you shouldn't be surprised if there are people grouping up near the element. Uh, choppers are great for mobility, but uh, everyone shoots heli, so I always recommend an LTV to grab a beryllium. They have way more health. Uh, you can put a trophy system on them. So in that case, if you do so happen to be locked on by a joker or a missile, it'll counter it. You can also use counter UAVs to hide the beryllium crown, at least on the map. So the next element, tritium, is going to spawn in a vault, which you'll need to defend for at least a minute. It kind of works like a recon intel uh, contract, which will shoot a flare from its location. The only thing is that's different. You can't progress it faster if there are multiple teammates. It'll just take a minute, regardless of how many people are armed by it. But once you grabbed it, you'll get a little bit of money, just like the first element. And this time, you're gonna not be able to use a vehicle at all. It's it's going to disable an EMP, any vehicle that's around you. So what I like to do is I like to use uh, redeploy drones, at least one to two of them to kind of help uh, rotate myself into a high area or an area that has a zip. And once you get to a zip, you can essentially just rotate this second element for free. But again, portable redeploy drones are super clutch for in the moment and great for getting distances across a short amount of time. So once you grab tritium, the third element, plutonium, is going to spawn in this helicopter. It's going to be able to be seen from any player in in the game. You definitely want to shoot this thing down fast. I believe it takes around 300 bullets, I've heard, give or take. But another thing to know, its health will regenerate if you are not laying consistent damage to it. I've only found out about this recently, so make sure you have another teammate to help shoot down with you. Another tip that I like to do, sometimes this helicopter is going to fly over an area that's near a lot of players. What you can do is sort of like shoot it a little bit to grab its aggro so it can fly over you and focus you, and then once it gets shot down, it's close by for you to grab. Another thing to know is when you grab this crate, it's not going to spawn the final uh, countdown timer for the bomb site. So if you are pressed for time, you can literally just open the crate so you can clear the nuclear crate icon on the map. It's like another BE if you don't open the crate. So just at minimum, always open the crate. And if you're ready to uh, assemble all the elements and rotate them, just go ahead and pick up plutonium. Because once you pick up plutonium, you're going to start the final countdown for the bomb site spawn. All right, so the end game. Ideally, you want all the elements in possession at this point in time. Uh, you either want to be in a vehicle or near a redeploy zip. If you are ready, there's a good chance you're going to get a very early plant for your new. Early plants typically mean they're pretty likely to detonate. Once you grab last element, you're going to get a minute to see where the bomb site is going to land. You can actually see this plane physically drop the bomb site, whether you're in the game physically or you can see it on the map. But you can actually see it soon the plane you can see the plane sooner than you see it on the map and you can kind of judge the flight path and estimate where the bomb site would go and if you use this you know you're buying yourself so much extra time to plant and deposit all the elements so you can plant is also as late as one second or less on the timer you just need to have started planning before that final timer runs out so you will have five minutes once that bomb site lands on the ground you'll have five minutes to, to deposit it and then plant the bomb do your best to get there first as, like I said, early plants typically are pretty guaranteed nuke with little contest. Now, in some cases, if you're having a contested bomb site, planning early is not really an option. So you may need to kind of just let the area cool down and just have the teams clear out each other and then wait for like an opportune moment to plant the bomb. So just choose your opening, make sure you smoke it out and you PA it so that they have a decent chance of planning it. If you also have access to a buy, buying mortars and PAs are a must. You essentially just want to own the streak airspace so that no teams have a decent chance to take your positioning and get an opportunity to defuse it. You will get one audio notification that someone is trying to defuse your nuke. After that, you will get no more audio notifications. Just be aware, sometimes when there's a lot of PAs and streaks going off, it can also override this audio cue because I've had a nuke get defused just because we solely relied on this audio cue to tell us someone was defusing. So always watch the bomb. Depending on the bomb site, trophies are also pretty handy. 
as most players will always try to smoke when trying to defuse. But keep in mind, if an enemy does manage to get a streak off on the bomb site, your trophy is going to get destroyed. So just keep that in mind. When watching bomb site, it's obviously just a very good idea to run a thermal site. Everyone has smokes nowadays and will try to smoke and defuse. So when it comes to uh, picking a good position to watch bomb site, sometimes not picking the best building is the play. When you use the best building, typically all the teams in the lobby are fighting for that positioning too so your focus is just to watch the bomb when i run nukes i typically have two to three people watch the bomb site and then we have one person on standby to run on over over the bomb site to clear last second defuses it takes about 10 seconds to defuse so if no one has started defusing before the last 10 seconds they will not be able to defuse it Another thing I forgot to mention is the champion's quest will not fail if all of you die as long as you planted uh, the bomb. You just wait for the timer to go out and somehow no no one manages to defuse it. Your nuke will still go off and you'll still get the rewards. During the last 20 to 30 seconds of the detonation timer, I typically just tell my whole team to send the bomb and just own it essentially. Just be all over it, kill anyone who tries to defuse, and you're essentially good to go. Stay alive, stay alive. No. Yo, you got nuked. Oh. Mad There's no way we just Holy did that. Shit. There's no Yo, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it. My two mortars hit it. My two mortars hit it. Hit it, hit they're defeated. Oh, no, 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 Three subtext on it. Oh my god, Sam. Kill him. Nice. He's still hit it though. Yeah, I'm hitting him. I'm about to be able to send We're down. Send We're down. Send down. We're down. Oh, down. Yeah. Yeah. Bomb. One, two, Ten five. seconds. Five. That's one shot. Oh, yeah. I just got a couple with the PA. God damn it, we were in the photo. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 what were you trying to take a picture for? <laughs> all you guys are in front of the bomb site, that's all. Yeah, you guys are fucking horrible. How do you let that happen? <laughs> Imagine getting nuked.